Welcome to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny. Today we're going to do some pork ribs on the Weber kettle with the setup Weber kettle intended. Now I've already prepared these ribs by pulling off the membrane, trimming, and seasoning before our cook started. Now let's take a look at the setup. If you don't already know, let me tell you. Weber comes with an app and this isn't a thermometer app or anything like that. It's just a Weber app that shows you how to set up your Weber kettle. It tells you recipes. It allows you to register any Weber that you own. It's just an app for all Weber kettle owners. All you have to do is go to the app store, do a search for Weber grill app, and this one should come up. Go ahead and install it. Once you have it installed, fire it up. Once it's opened at the bottom of the panel, just select recipes. Now I'm doing St. Louis pork ribs today. It just so happens they don't have a recipe for that. So we'll look at the baby back uh, recipe for today. We'll select that and then you should come to this screen. Once you've done that, all you have to do is start scrolling down. You'll see a list of instructions that shows you how to prepare uh, pork ribs. And right here on number four, it says to prepare the grill for indirect cooking. So that's what we'll do. Right below that, you'll see grill method guide. Go ahead and tap that. And then this panel will show up with these little toggles and slides. So we're cooking on a charcoal grill. Then we wanna go over to the indirect method and then that bottom slide will slide it all the way over to indirect low heat and then this panel will surface it actually shows you the configuration with charcoal on both sides of the kettle and it also gives you a graph on how the convection is going to work inside of the weber kettle now this graphic also shows you exactly where to set the top and bottom vent for the temperature range that weber has suggested now we are going to use the baskets. So I have this graphic for you, which shows the setup of the baskets and the water pan. And this graphic shows you the convection as well. And now let's set up our Weber kettle. I'll place the baskets on the bottom grill grate across from each other and parallel to each other. Next, I'll fill them up with charcoal and I'll add the wood chunks, leaving a little space at the top of each basket for our lit charcoal. And right in between those baskets, I'll place our drip pan slash water pan if you choose to add water. Place about 14 to 16 briquettes in a Weber chimney starter and get those started. Once the briquettes have ashed over, it's time to get them in to the charcoal baskets. I'll just get a pair of tongs and evenly distribute those between each basket. Now we'll get the grate down and then make our vent adjustments. Now remember that graph that we saw earlier, it showed you exactly where to place the vents for this cook. We're gonna set the top vent right where it is suggested and we'll set the bottom vent right where it's suggested as well. Now I'll just get the lid closed and watch the vent. I'm gonna make a judgment call. If a lot of smoke is coming out, then I'm gonna wait for the smoke to clear up. If not a lot of smoke is coming out, I'm gonna go ahead and put these ribs on right now. Now, after watching the vent for about five minutes, I'm satisfied with the amount of smoke coming out. There virtually is no smoke coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these ribs down right now. If there was, you'd wait for the smoke to clear before you did this. So let's get the lid open and get these ribs right in between the two Weber kettle baskets. We're going to close the lid and make sure that the thermometer, the handle, and the vent are all aligned with the ribs below. Because today we're not using an aftermarket thermometer. We're going to use the thermometer in the lid of the Weber kettle. And placing the lid this way is also going to ensure that our thermometer is not over the direct heat coming from the coals. It is now 11 a.m. and we're just gonna let these cook until it's time to spritz. Now an hour later, the temperature is looking like about 220 degrees. We're not gonna adjust the vents. We're just gonna go with what Weber has suggested. Now it's one o'clock, two hours into our cook and check this out. We are now in that temperature range uh, that Weber said we would be in 
And at this time, two hours in, I'm also going to go ahead and start spritzing my ribs. To spritz the ribs today, I'm just going to use some pickle juice right out of the pickle jar. Now, this used to be the way that I smoked all of my ribs. And through experience, I know to check the, uh, the charcoal and see how it's doing. Not that we would almost be out of fuel, but using this method, one side of the charcoal usually burns hotter than the other side. And by taking a look at this, you can see that the right side is burning a lot hotter than the left side. So whenever this happens, to solve that, I'll take some of the lit charcoal out of the side that's burning hotter. I have a little tin pan that I use and then take that lit charcoal and set it in the other charcoal basket. And that'll help even out the fire for the rest of the cook. And really that didn't take very long at all. It all took about five minutes. After all that, an hour later, our temperature has recovered. We're in the range that Weber has suggested. Our smoke is still looking good and it is now two o'clock. We'll get the lid open, check to see if our bark has been set and it's feeling pretty good right now. And I'll also spritz the ribs again. I think these ribs are coming along pretty good. The bark is set, the color is good. And at this time, I've actually just decided not to wrap these ribs. I prefer an unwrapped rib. I just like that uh, exterior bark that gets created from an unwrapped rib. It's just a personal preference. And now an hour later, about three o'clock, I'm going to start checking for doneness. One thing I like to do to check for doneness is to pick the ribs up right in the middle and see what kind of flop they have. The more flop, the further along the ribs are. Another visual cue you can use to see how far along your ribs are is that while you have them up, take a look at the ribs themselves and you'll start seeing these uh, cracks form right at the bend. The bigger the crack, the further the ribs are along. So now I know about how done these are, I'm just gonna go ahead, spritz them again and get the lid closed. An hour later, let's check on our ribs again. You can see our temperature is still in its range. The ribs are looking fantastic. I'll spritz the ribs again and then check for doneness. Now the bend is still looking pretty weak. Uh, we still have a long way to go. So now another hour later, and let's get the lid off and take another look. And now here is that visual cue I told you about earlier. Look how big this crevice is forming under the ribs own weight. That's a pretty good crack. And check out the bend. These ribs are almost done, not quite. I'll go ahead and spritz them. And this time I'm only gonna give it between probably 15 and 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes later, you can see that there's a little more pullback on the bones. And check out this bend now. That is practically a 90 degree bend there. And it's holding up under its own weight, but it's not breaking. If your ribs break apart at this point, then you have fall off the bone ribs. And a lot of people like those, but I'm looking for a bite through rib with a clean bone which is just has a little more texture to it. Again, personal preference. Now at this point, I'm going to call these ribs done. After about 45 minutes to an hour, rest is done. Let's take a look at our hard work. Now I just get these ribs on my cutting board and cut a rib off and forgive the uh, direct sunlight, but a lot of times I don't have control over that. You can see the uh, moisture glistening on the ribs very nice smoke ring. Let's go ahead and bite into them. This for me is perfectly done pork ribs. Has a great bite to it with a clean bone. And that's what I'm looking for in a good pork rib. No sauce needed. They're just simple, great ribs. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not? Go ahead and do that now. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.